So this is the last video in our acid base unit. Um, we are going to take a look at how common ions will affect the equilibrium of a weak acid or a weak base. And as a result, we're going to learn about buffers. So um, we've seen the common ion effect before. So if you remember, if you add an ion, um, if you add a common ion, it's going to cause a shift in equilibrium. More likely than not, it's going to prevent the, the substance from dissociating. When we did it with KSP, we had a solubility decrease as a result of already having some ion in solution. We're going to see the same kind of thing when we look at weak acids and bases, but there's just going to be less dissociation, not necessarily um, precipitation, but less dissociation. So like we said, the presence of a common ion is going to suppress the ionization of any weak acid or base. Le Chatelier's principle kicks in. So let's consider the situation of um, a strong electrolyte, um, sodium acetate. So strong electrolyte means it's going to dissociate 100%. So it's got a single headed arrow. You mix that with a weak acid, acetic acid. Well, acetic acid establishes equilibrium. So you have some of this present as well as some of this. So here's our common ion. If I have some of this sodium acetate already present in water, what's going to happen? It's going to drive this equilibrium reaction back to the left. And so less dissociation is going to happen. And so if I have less H plus, that means the pH is going to be higher. So a common ion for an acid is going to increase the pH because you have less dissociation, therefore less H plus. So here's another example with numbers. Um, so we've got formic acid and potassium formate at these two concentrations, 0.3 and 0.5. Um, so we really what we have is a mixture of a weak acid, the formic acid, and its conjugate base because the potassium formate is going to um, associate 100%. So you've got the weak acid, and then you've got the presence of extra formate ion. So we're going to solve an ice chart just like we would any other time, except since it's a common ion, we've got some of the product, some of the ion already there. Same thing we're going to look at. Notice H plus is zero. We've got minus X's and plus X's. So at equilibrium, pretty straightforward. So when we solve for the equilibrium expression, in this case, the Ka for formic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fourth. We're going to solve for essentially X. We're going to solve for H plus. Well, you plug all these numbers in and you wind up X is 1.038 times 10 to the negative four. And therefore our pH is 3.9. So this pH is actually higher than what you would have for formic acid if it were just all by itself. Because again, the formate ion is driving the reaction back towards the left. It's making more formate molecules, more hydrogen formate molecules form. Um, another thing you could do is use the henderson hasselbach equation. This is really useful. Now you still have to solve an ice chart. You still have to figure out what the equilibrium concentrations are. But we're going to take the equilibrium expression. That's essentially what we're doing. We're taking the equilibrium expression and rearranging it. Um, so here, instead of H+, plus, we're using pH. Instead of Ka, we're using pKa. Remember, the negative log of the Ka is the pKa. And then that we're going to add the log of the ratio between the anion and the acid together. Um, so again, we're going to, in order to do this, we need to approximate. So instead of using 0 0.30 minus X, we're going to use just 0 0.30 and we're going to use just 0.52. And so when you plug the numbers in, so this is 0 0.52, this is 0 0.30, the pKa is, um, 3.77. That's the negative log of, was it 1.8 times 10 to the negative four or something like that? Um, and that'll solve for the pH. 
So we wind up with a pH of 4.01. And if you remember in the ice chart, we got 3.98. So it gives us a pretty good approximation. And that's because we're getting rid of these minus X and plus X's. So it's not going to be quite as accurate. But it's a lot faster to do the henderson halkebach equation. Hasselbach equation. Um, although, again, you guys with your solve function, maybe not. All right, so what you have been seeing is an example of a buffer. A buffer is a solution that resists pH because it is a mixture of a weak acid and the salt of the weak acid. So the salt of the weak acid is actually going to provide more of the conjugate base ions. Or it's a weak base and the salt of a weak base, so it's going to provide more of the conjugate acid, the cation ions, in order to have that equilibrium um, between the whole molecule and the ions. You can't have a buffer solution without both of them. Um, and like I said, buffers uh, are able to resist changes in pH um, with the addition of small quantities of acid and base. You can't dump a gallon of acid in and expect a buffer to work appropriately, um, but it's going to resist small changes in pH. So let's take a look at the situation. So let's go back to acetic acid and sodium acetate. So we've got this reaction going on, and since we have added a whole lot, uh, or not a whole lot, but we've added sodium acetate, we have a whole lot more acetate ion. So we have an abundance of this, plus we have an abundance of this. So that's what's going to let us jump back and forth. So with this situation, if I add acid, if I increase the amount of H+, what's going to happen? It's going to bond with all of that acetate ion and make more acetic acid. So it's going to shift left. If I add base, by adding base, that's removing H+, because remember, this all-important reaction, H++ plus plus OH- minus is going to create water. Um, assuming there's enough acetic acid to replace the H+, pluses, the reaction is going to shift to the right. So the buffer will address the amount of H+, plus. it'll keep the amount of H+, plus balanced, because it will either separate to replace lost ones, or it will combine to use up extras. So that's how a buffer works. Um, so you can see what happens if we put um, HCl into a water solution and then a buffer solution. Um, the water solution, the pH is going to drop pretty readily as I add H+. But in my buffer solution, I have some of the whole ion and I have some of the acetate, ac acetic acid. If I add H+, plus, I'm simply going to shift the reaction to make more of this, and so the pH of the buffer stays more consistent. So, good questions for you. Will I be able to make a buffer out of Kf and Hf? Kf is a weak acid, F- is, is its conjugate, so yep, I can make a buffer. How about this one? Do I have a a weak acid or a weak base, and the salt of that weak acid or weak base? Nope, HCl is strong. So as a result, I can't form a buffer with a strong acid. I have 100% dissociation here. So all I'm going to have in solution is Cl minus ions. I don't have any HCls. So I can't have a buffer with a strong acid. I can only have buffers with weak acids and weak bases. So how about this guy? Can I have a buffer system here? Is there a way to account for extra H pluses and extra OH minuses? There is. You've got carbonate from sodium carbonate, and you have its conjugate, HCO3 minus. So as long as you have the, the two here, you can create a buffer solution because this will combine with extra H pluses. This will combine with extra OH minuses. So we've got two examples of buffers and one that is not a buffer. So it's got to be a weak acid or a weak base and it's conjugate. Um, all right, so last idea is we're still looking at buffers, but what if we are faced with um, adding a solution to a system? What effect is that going to have on the buffer? And I think 
I'm going to pause here because I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough time to do this whole video before my 15 minutes runs out. So we're going to pause here. We'll create a second video.